He was born in France in the late 1590s. That he was a known friend of Samuel de Champlain and Etienne Brule. That he was attracted to Canada to participate in Champlain's plan. His name is Jean Nicolet. Jean Nicolet, a young clerk, embarked on a life-changing journey as he immigrated to Quebec to join the Compagnie de Marchands. This trading monopoly owned by the French aristocracy presented a unique opportunity for Nicolet to train as an interpreter and expand his knowledge of the First Nations. Tasked with learning the indigenous language, Nicolet was sent to live among the Algonquins on Allumet Island, a friendly settlement situated along the Ottawa River for a trade route. Embracing the challenges of immersion, he absorbed their language, culture, and way of life. It was during this time that Nicolet began to develop a profound understanding of the First Nations customs and traditions. After spending time with the Algonquins, Nicolet returned to Quebec in 1620 and was assigned to live among the Odawa and Algonquin people in the Lake Nipissing region. Here, he established a store and engaged in trade with the native inhabitants. Through his interactions, Nicolet built strong relationships with the community, earning their trust and respect. During his nine-year stay in the region, Nicolet formed a deep connection with a Nipissing woman. Their bond resulted in the birth of their daughter, whom he named Euphrosine Madeleine Nicolet. The blending of cultures and the birth of their child symbolized the intertwining of Nicolet's French roots with the indigenous heritage he had embraced. As fate would have it, on July 19, 1629, Quebec fell under the control of the Kirk brothers, who seized power on behalf of England. In the face of this dire situation, Jean Nicolet made a harrowing decision. Alongside his daughter Euphrosine, he sought refuge in the safety of the Huron territory, far from the grasp of the English conquerors. From there, he actively worked against English interests and fought for the restoration of French rule. After years of turmoil and uncertainty, the French regained control of Canada, and Nicolet was finally able to return to Quebec. His journey had been arduous, but his commitment to the First Nations and their welfare never wavered. Upon his return, Nicolet married Marguerite Quillard, the daughter of esteemed Quebec settler Guillaume Quillard and the goddaughter of Champlain himself. Together, they established their home in trois where they raised their family. Jean Nicolet's experience in Quebec was marked by his passionate pursuit of knowledge, his cultural immersion with the First Nations people, and his unwavering dedication to the French cause. His story is one of resilience, adaptation, and the blending of cultures, leaving an indelible mark on the history of Quebec and the relationships between the French and the indigenous communities. Jean Nicolet, a French explorer, embarked on a remarkable journey of exploration in the uncharted lands of Wisconsin. Inspired by the belief that he could find a direct passage to the Orient, Nicolet set his sights on the vast and mysterious Lake Michigan. Equipped with the stories and information he gathered from the indigenous people, Nicolet arrived at the shores of modern-day Green Bay, Wisconsin. With the hopes of a grand discovery in his heart, he made landfall at Red Banks, a region where the Ho-Chunk people resided. The Ho-Chunk, known as the People of the Sea, in French, sparked Nicolet's curiosity, leading him to don brightly colored robes and carry two pistols to symbolize his authority. Embracing his new role as the French ambassador to the Ho-Chunk, Nicolet embarked on an arduous journey up the Fox River, accompanied by his Ho-Chunk guides. They traversed the rugged terrain, portaging to the Wisconsin River and eventually reaching its widening waters. Nicolet found himself filled with anticipation, convinced that he was on the precipice of discovering a route to the Pacific Ocean. Utterly convinced of his proximity to the coveted South Sea, Nicolet made the fateful decision to turn back and return to Quebec to report his groundbreaking findings. Unbeknownst to him, he had come tantalizingly close to the upper reaches of the mighty Mississippi River, a discovery that would have altered the course of history. Nicolet's journey was not without its challenges. The harsh wilderness of Wisconsin tested his resilience and determination as he navigated unfamiliar waters and treacherous landscapes. However, he persevered, driven by a burning desire to unlock the secrets of the unknown. As he bid farewell to the Ho-Chunk people, Nicolet left an indelible mark on their history. His ritual display of authority through his attire and weapons left a lasting impression on the Ho-Chunk, opening the doors for further interactions between the French and Native American communities. Though Nicolet's exploration of Wisconsin did not result in the discovery of the fabled passage to the Orient, his courageous spirit and unwavering curiosity laid the foundation for future explorations and interactions between European explorers and indigenous peoples. His inadvertent near-miss of the upper Mississippi River was a testament to the untapped potential that lay just beyond the horizon. Jean Nicolet, forever remembered as the first European to venture into the heart of Wisconsin, will be forever etched in history as a trailblazer who dared to traverse the uncharted wilderness in search of new horizons. Jean Nicolet, a French explorer, 
embarked on a remarkable journey that would later spark controversy and reevaluate the traditional accounts of his arrival in Green Bay. It was a time of great discoveries and ambitious explorations, as nations sought to expand their territories and establish alliances. In the last couple of decades, some scholars have raised doubts about the commonly accepted narrative of Nicolay's expedition. According to Ronald Steeb, Nicolay's purpose was not to find a route to China, contrary to popular belief. Steeb proposed that Nicolay did not even venture to Lake Michigan but instead encountered Algonquin people known as the Puans at Keweenaw Bay, Michigan. Nancy Ostrich Lurie, an esteemed researcher from the Milwaukee Public Museum, along with Patrick J. Young, from the Milwaukee School of Engineering, further explored these claims. They theorized that Nicolay met the Puans near Menominee, Michigan, acknowledging that although the Menominee and the Puans were distinct tribes, they shared a strong alliance and controlled access to the coveted Green Bay. These researchers argued that Nicolay's primary mission was not solely to seek a passage to China but rather to establish peace between New France and the Puans. The alliance also aimed to counter the formidable Iroquois people, who posed a significant threat to both nations. This reinterpretation of Nicolay's journey has sparked heated debates and challenged historical assumptions. It has called into question the traditional depiction of Nicolay wearing a Chinese robe and meeting the Puans at Red Banks. The new narrative suggests a different sequence of events, where Nicolay's interactions with the Puans occurred in Menominee, Michigan, with the assistance of the Menominee people serving as interpreters during negotiations. While this controversy persists, it highlights the complexity of historical exploration and the importance of re-evaluating established narratives. The ongoing research and re-examination of primary sources have provided new insights into Jean Nicolet's mission and shed light on the alliances and peace-seeking efforts undertaken during this era. As the exploration of Nicolet's journey continues, historians strive to uncover the truth buried within time and unravel the intricacies of the early encounters between European explorers and indigenous nations.